WSU sees more students with confirmed COVID-19 cases. How does, does this stack up with the rest of the Palouse in Washington State? WSU students graduating in spring 2021 are disgruntled with the planned virtual commencement. What are they going to do to express their displeasure? Murrow News 8 starts now. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Good afternoon, I'm Tierra Trail. And I'm Christian Garza. Welcome to Murrow News 8. According to Pullman Radio, there are two new COVID cases at WSU Thursday. There are nine active cases on campus with seven of those being students and two being employees. WSU has a positivity rate of 0.8%. Whitman and Latah County have 11 new cases of COVID-19. According to the Moscow Pullman Daily News, Whitman County received five positive cases, bringing the county total to 3,270. Latah County received six new cases, bringing the county total to 2,489 cases. COVID-19 vaccines are available for healthcare workers and individuals 65 and older. COVID-19 vaccine distribution is picking up the pace. Mirror News 8 reporter Asia Farrington has the report on what to expect when you get your vaccine. At a first glance outside, it may not seem like it, but spring is just around the corner. And this year, it's bringing a lot more than April showers. It's also bringing doses of the highly anticipated COVID-19 vaccines. Washington's vaccine phase 1B tier 1 is currently eligible, with the rest of the 1B tiers available to make an appointment in the springtime. But when making your appointment, be sure you won't have to reschedule. Palouse medical receptionist Ashley Witt explains how delicate handling the Pfizer vaccine can really be. The amount of vials that we need to get through everyone in that day, but say like three people cancel out of the schedule, well, those vaccines need to be used within like an hour of them being drawn or something like that. Whether you end up scheduled for the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, here are some side effects you can expect from the both of them. Just from the shot yesterday, like, I was fine for a few hours, but my arms started really hurting, and then I honestly felt so drained and so tired, and I was talking to my dad, and he felt the exact same way yesterday. My coworkers who got it, they got, like, extremely bad headaches, migraines. Some people got really high fevers. Some were throwing up. Some were literally bedridden for, like, two days. So everyone's kind of reactions to it have been different, but I was lucky, and I didn't have any, which I'm super happy about. You can find out when you qualify for the vaccine at findyourphasewa.org. In Pullman, I'm Asia Farrington. Washington State health officials said on Thursday that they expect about 90% of vaccine doses to arrive late due to winter storms around the country. The Washington State Department of Health's Acting Assistant Secretary, Michelle Roberts, says that over 200,000 doses have been delayed. They are hoping to have vaccines all throughout the state by the end of the weekend or next week. Some tips and tricks about driving safe in the snow. We go to our Mirror News 8 reporter, Christian Garza, for more information. Last couple of days, Pullman has been covered in over several inches of snow. This snowstorm has made it nearly impossible to get from one side of town to the other without getting stuck or momentarily losing traction resulting in slipping and sliding on the road, which could also lead to accidents. Since it started snowing, Pullman Police Department has reported that there have been 29 accidents related to driving too fast for conditions. The Pullman PD Commander Jake Opkenorth says that this is a common problem because drivers aren't giving enough space to other drivers on the road when there is snow on the ground. Winter snow tires make a big difference. Obviously, all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive helps uh, with with traction and as far as moving. Um, I will say that that doesn't really help a lot when it comes to stopping. So that's a problem. Sometimes you see people with four wheel drives, they, they can go great, but then they realize that they can't stop any better than any other car and, and they get going too fast and slide right through a stop sign. The snowing started on February 7th with temperatures fluctuating between the mid twenties and high thirties. So put on your winter clothes and start looking for other ways to get to work or school if your vehicle is not equipped to driving in the snow because it doesn't look like it's going to stop until later next week. The Pullman Fire Department's fire chief, Mike Heston, has a bit of advice for driving in the snow during this time. Slow down is the main key in the wintertime. 
give yourself plenty of time to get where you need to go. Be patient. Um, just remember there's lots of other folks on the road out there that have different levels of driving skills as well. So that would be the keys. Just remember to bundle up, clean off your front and back windows, and drive carefully for the next couple of days. For more information about the weather, you can go to www.weather.com and type in Pullman, Washington in the search bar or go to your weather app on your phone. From Pullman, Washington, I'm Christian Garza with Murrow News 8. A three-story project in Moscow passed another hurdle last night. The Moscow Urban Renewal Agency gave the okay to revise plans for a mixed project on the streets of 6 and Jackson. The building would hold seven spaces for shops on the ground floor with 10 residential units above. Construction is set to begin this summer. When? Murrow News 8 reporter Pamela Alarcon has updates for you. End of the Palouse Mall in Moscow, Idaho. The retail giant Target made a press release via their website for the upcoming store. Plans were said to have been delivered to the city in early September. Uh, I'm very excited. It's going to, I think, kind of boost everybody uh, back up in the mall and bring in the customers, which is really, really exciting. I'm so excited for, you know, more interactions. <laughs> The west end of the mall used to be home to the department store Macy's, but after it was closed in 2016, the space was left empty, driving customers away from that side of the mall altogether, even for other stores that still remain there. We're here at the future Target in Moscow, Idaho, that is undergoing a 20,000 square foot renovation. The Macy's was only about 40,000 square feet, so to meet the 60,000 square feet that Target planned for, there was need for a 20,000 square foot add-on. I heard sometime um, they're supposed to be done sometime this summer. There has yet to be an official opening date that has been released by the city or the store themselves. The Target headquarters specialist declined to comment on the matter any further. So excited for you know the jobs it's also going to create for the community and for the access that we're going to have to Target. I'm just overall very excited for it. <laughs> One thing's for sure, Target will bring a number of employments to the community. From Murrow News 8, I'm Pamela Alarcon. According to the Pol Moscow Pullman Daily News, Moscow Mayor Bill Lambert and the Board of Latow County Commissioners each wrote a letter to the Idaho Senate opposing a new property tax bill. Lambert has concern that the bill will be harmful to attracting new businesses and won't offer tax relief residents want. Both letters mention the huge tax shifts seen from commercial properties to residential ones. Lambert and the board hopes that the letters will argue relief for property owners. Governor Jay Inslee says that school districts with no plan to offer in-person instruction could lose out on potential funding from a COVID-19 relief bill. According to King 5, Inslee made these comments after a visit to Puyallup's Fisk Grove Elementary School. The Puyallup School District is planning on offering hybrid classes to its students. According to the Office of Public Instruction, about 30% of students across the state are receiving some kind of in-person instruction. According to Como News, Washington State Senate has passed a bill to create a panel of arbitrators to review police discipline decisions. Nine to 18 arbitrators will be assigned to hear officers' discipline appeals. Arbitrators from the roster will be assigned in alphabetical order rather than agreed upon by the officers and departments. This is part of a group of police reform legislation that came about following Black Lives Matter protests that happened last year. Road work near Greek Road oh, slowed down some traffic in Pullman today. A Vista Utilities crews were working on the corner of B Street and Colorado Street next to the Coog today. As crews cut into the road, traffic was slowed down to one lane on Colorado Street. Drivers throughout the area could expect delays. B Street was blocked off at the intersection. Avista did not say how long the work would take. There is more. There is movement within WSU administration this week as a senior director at Student Financial Services will become an interim vice president of the department. Joy Squarey will begin in her new role next week. She br brings over 26 years in financial aid administration. As WSU's plans for fall 2021 continue to take shape, graduation for spring remains virtual. But with almost three months until graduation, some students are taking charge to fight for some kind of in-person experience for the end of their college days. Mackenzie Dayton reports. 
we want the whole shebang. We want masks, we want social distance, we want people to get tested, like literally all the safety precautions. Students are signing an online petition on whether or not graduation should be in person at all this year in any form, even suggesting being at Martin Stadium at 25% capacity, rain or shine. Siglali Herrera started a petition on February 11th stating that there should have been more efforts to create a COVID-safe in-person graduation to celebrate the hard work of the 2021 graduates. There's already been two graduations that have been completely online, and I just felt like, you know, okay, it makes sense, you know, the first time around, but I feel like there's a little bit more that could be done the second time around. Herrera is a senior this year and understands that there needs to be precautions, but more can be done to celebrate students. She reached out to the commencement committee about this petition, stating her concerns about the lack of effort and what her ideas were to make it happen. And so I just really sympathize with a lot of my other peers as well who are graduating. And um, honestly, I feel like we're so far along in this process of like dealing with COVID and like knowing what's safe, what's not safe and like how to handle it. Like we have a vaccine on the way it's getting distributed and so I felt like personally like a little bit more could be done um, to celebrate like our students here and I know that you know especially based off of the response I was getting with the petition that a lot of students did want to do that. Another WSU senior Emily Rose expresses that she can see both views of having an in-person commencement. She would love to walk in person as she is a first-generation college student, but she also understands the circumstances of the pandemic and that it might not be completed in person. Moving forward, though, I have a lot of friends that are in different cities and states attending university and they're getting ready to graduate. However, their universities were able to plan accordingly to have an in-person graduation by separating the degrees up and then separating groups up and having that gra graduation be outdoors, whether it's at a football stadium or a large area where groups of people can safely have a ceremony for graduates. Graduating commencement ceremonies are normally held here at Beasley Coliseum, but this year seniors will be watching their graduation online. According to Washington State Department of Health, of 200,000 thousand vaccines that were scheduled to be delivered Thursday, 90% of them are delayed. These delays are due to winter storms throughout other areas of the country. Assistant Secretary for the Department of Health, Michelle Roberts, hopes that this weekend through the beginning of the next week, those doses will, will arrive. Problems continue to pursue for Texas residents from the fallout of power outages. Is the snow here to stay for a long term? More on Murrow News 8 when we come back. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. 
I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Two Florida women attempted to receive their second round of vaccines by dressing as elderly women. According to the director of the Florida Department of Health, Orange County, the bonnets, gloves, and glasses did not match their IDs, prompting the concern the 44- and 34-year-old women had received their first round of vaccines. However, it is unknown whether this ruse was used at, at that time. Yesterday, a major Trump campaign donor pleaded guilty to tax evasion. Ahmad Zarubi was sentenced to 12 years in prison for falsifying records in an attempt to hide his role as a foreign agent. Zarubi was also fined nearly $2 million and ordered to pay over $15 million in restitution. Prosecutors say Zarubi was routing foreign money into multiple campaigns over a decade to try to influence American elections. As power gets restored for millions of Texans, there are other problems arising due to the cold weather. According to NBC News, millions of Texans don't have drinking water and are under orders to boil tap water. The Electric Re Re Reliability Council of Texas, which oversees 90% of Texas energy production, said emergency conditions are expected to end later today. Texas weather is starting to clear up and the lights are back on again. But the situation is far from over. Zach Anders spoke with two impacted. Weather severity continues in Texas. It's just been a nightmare. A rare winter storm revealing the state largely unprepared. The worst possible scenario we're living in, I know. The power grid unable to handle the freezing temperatures. Thermostat showing, you know, like 40 degrees in their house. Grocery stores are hardly open. There's very few options for gas. WFAA Dallas reporter Alex Rozier has covered dozens of weather stories, but none like this. We all have our own situation, too. I mean, I haven't had power for... I just got it back yesterday. University of North Texas senior Chance Townsend, a transplant from Alaska, volunteered to drive in the snow to deliver supplies, an effort organized by students online. I'm used to driving in the snow because, you know, comparatively, three, five inches isn't that bad, but it's Texas. So. And as we head into the weekend, still recovering from the unrelenting cold, one thing is heating up. They weren't prepared. You know, seeming to be a preventable crisis. There's going to be some state leaders that are going to have to answer for that. For Murrow News 8, I'm Zach Anders. This last week has been full of snow. Ava, can you tell us if we're going to get more or less? Thanks, Tira. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be rain and snow today in Pullman. We're looking at a high of 35 and a low of 26. It's kind of slushy out there on the roads, so I recommend just, you know, bundling up also because it's going to be 11 mile, mile per hour winds. So that 35 degrees is going to feel a lot cooler once you get outside. So bundle up, make sure you're walking safely because it is slushy out there on the sidewalks and roads. Looking to tomorrow, we are experiencing a 33 high and a low of 30, and we are gonna experience more of a chance of snow tomorrow. So we may be going back to hopefully not as extreme as what we experienced last week with the snow, but be sure to check the roads if you are planning to go driving. And if you are, be sure to be safe. You have four wheel drive, put that in. If not, and you wanna stay home, it's better to stay home in the snow anyway. So just make sure to look out for those roads and bundle up as well because the wind will be uh, picking up as well. So going to Washington as a whole, the west side is going to be experiencing, as we know, the usual west side, the rain, it's going to be super high 47s, pretty much like summer for them, honestly. And then once we get over to Yakima and Tri-Cities, they're also experiencing some sun, which is exciting for them. Once we get to Pullman, Spokane, mix of rain and snow, like I said before. When we get to our five-day forecast, it's going to be going back to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, sorry. <laughs> Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, it's gonna be a mix of rain and snow, experiencing some 40s and 45s, 33s, not too bad. But what is exciting is on Wednesday, we're gonna have some sun here in Pullman, so we can go out and get our tan on in 39 degree weather if we want, but just be sure to keep a lookout for the snow and maybe coming back after Wednesday. That's all I have for you, back to the desk. Thank you, Ava. WSU's men's basketball had a dominant performance last night versus Cal, which Cougar sophomore went off against the Golden Bears. What milestone did LeBron James achieve last night against the Brooklyn Nets? More when we come back. 
Days. Months. Hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I give you this. A lifetime. Can rush by without realizing what we're missing. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. <laughs> demolished Cal 82 to 51 last night at Beasley Coliseum. Leading the way for the men's basketball team was sophomore guard Noah Williams, who had 24 points in the first half. Williams would finish a couple plays short of a triple-double, making his stat line 32 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists. The Cooks have been missing the floor presence of senior guard Isaac Bonton and playing in a funk in recent games. The blowout win against Cal is the largest win in Pac-12 play in almost 30 years. The WSU women's basketball team is at Beasley Coliseum to kick off a three-game homestand to close out the season. The homestand started no noon today against the Colorado Buffaloes, with the current score being 29-30. You can view the game on Pac-12 Plus via the WSU live stream. LeBron James has become the third NBN player to reach 35,000 career points. This major career milestone also makes him the youngest player to do so after Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Karl Malone. James commented to reporters after the game saying, quote, for me to be linked with some of the greatest to have played this game is an honor, end quote. Today marks the 20th anniversary of a NASCAR driver's death. And which famous actress is considering stepping away from the limelight? More of a major back. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot. Your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <clears throat> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right. No employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no. This warrior 
will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. According to CNN, after 20 years in the industry, Cameron Diaz says she has no desire to film any more movies. Diaz says that she will never say never to doing movies again, but will take the time to focus on her one-year-old daughter and her organic wine brand. Diaz's last appearance was in the 2014 adaption to Annie. Dell and Arbit Jr., a heartfelt message this morning, a day after the 20-year-old anniversary of his father's death in 2001. Dale Sr. was violently killed in a last lap wreck at the Daytona 500. The infamous driver was inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2010 to go along with his 76 Winston Cup race victories. What fun festivities is coming back as Phase 2 starts? More when we come back. took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a player kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> Get your singing boots on. Karaoke is back under phase two of Washington's Roadmap to Recovery Plan. Bars and restaurants are open at 25% capacity. Spokespersons for the Washington State Department of Health confirmed to the CRIM2 team that karaoke is allowed under phase two. I don't know about you, Christian, but I really like karaoke, honestly. I love karaoke. I feel like it is one of the greatest pastimes that we could just probably do in a bar. It's, just it's so fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you missed anything, this is this or any of our previous newscasts can always watch us on YouTube channel. For more news, uh, we can be found at nwpb.org slash mnh. Have a great night.